All right, everyone, welcome back to another dose of Mojo. And I'm really excited because I have a special guest with me today. And her name is Victoria Gallagher. And she is a worldwide leader in hypnotherapy, a best selling author, international speaker, a life success coach, and renowned authority on the law of attraction. I'm excited for you to learn more about her and to connect with her because she's dedicated her life to empowering people all over the world. And she is also the host of her own podcast, The Power of Your Mind. So I'm excited for you to join us today, Victoria. Welcome to Monday Morning Mojo. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I love empowering people and I love the theme of your show, Monday Morning Mojo, helping people to really look forward to the Mondays. And I always look forward to Mondays. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's a perfect, <laughs> a perfect match. Yeah, they, you know, thank you. And that is really what I had in mind when I started this is, you know, sometimes I think what we tell ourselves becomes our reality. Mm -hmm. And listen, we've all been there. We've had those Sunday night dreads or, or Monday morning blues. Yet, if we could turn that around and really shift our thinking, could we see a very different result from that? And I think you and I both know it can go further than just the way we think about a day of the week. And maybe that's a good place to jump off. So when you work with clients and, and in your writing, I know that, and I can see from behind you, you talk a little bit about the law of attraction. And I think for some of us, we get it, we understand it, but there's still so many people that really are not clear on what that means, right? Could you maybe unpack that a little bit and start from there? When you think about or talk about the law of attraction, what is it that you want someone to understand about that? Yeah, thank you. It's, it's a really great question. And it's one of those questions where a lot of times the answer shifts depending on who I'm talking to, because it just depends on what um, your level of understanding is. So, you know, a lot of people that maybe watch your show, maybe they've seen movies like The Secret and they've seen that, you know, thoughts become things. And mm -hmm. so starting from that premise, yes, essentially it comes down to the fact that your thoughts your predominant thoughts ultimately become your reality. Ultimately, it, it creates your experiences and the results in your life. But it goes through a process. It's not just like the thoughts themselves. So your thoughts ultimately create your predominant emotions. And your predominant emotions are essentially your vibration that you're giving off. It's the energy that you're emitting all around you. Totally. And it's also your feelings are what's going to cause you to step into action. Yes. And, you know, if you <laughs> go to bed at nine, you say, hey, I'm going to get up at five o'clock and you get up in the morning, you wake up at five and you're like, I don't feel like getting up. Guess what? You're telling yourself, I don't feel like it. And you feel tired and thus you're going to stay in bed. And you literally talk yourself into it, <laughs> right? It, you like it, believe it to be what it is. And exactly. And so in, in a lot of ways, too, right? Like you can talk yourself right back out of it as well. You can talk yourself into or out of anything. And essentially, the law of attraction, in a lot of ways, it's just kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. We create the world that we see around us. And it's happening on multiple levels. It's happening at the conscious level of mind, like, you know, very common sense thing, like I just talked about, where you wake up, I don't feel good, I'm not going to go to the gym, I'm not going to get up, I'm not going to meditate, I'm not going to do all the things, you know, I'm just going to, or you, or you say you will do those things and, and you feel good and you get the energy and you somehow get that mojo <laughs> to get yeah. going. But then the other side of the coin, the deeper side of this is that this primarily works at an unconscious level in the subconscious mind. And so most of our predominant thoughts, it's, it actually 
works in like a little bit of a cycle because what happens is be- we have the beliefs already, you know, stuck in our subconscious mind from a perpetual cycle of the way that we have been mm-hmm. thinking, feeling, acting, and subconscious mind. It actually sends us the thoughts that we have. The thoughts actually start there. The idea, like, you know, you decide that you're going to go shopping for something and you think that you just consciously made a decision to buy something, but it didn't happen that way. It ha- it already happened in the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind set, you know, made it seem like it's your idea. So all the yeah. things that we end up thinking, they actually start from our subconscious mind. So if we want to have better quality conscious thoughts, we need to change the subconscious mind. That's where we really need to start. We have to reprogram that mind and that, you know, will ultimately get us completely in alignment with where we want to go. And yes. And again, this is something that for some people listening right now might be like, oh, okay. So let's unpack it a little more. So I know that you call yourself the law of attraction hypnotist. Mm -hmm. And that is another thing that I wanted to get into talking about today, because I'm probably not as experienced as you are, but I do have some of that in my toolbox too. And I think that hypnosis is something that is also misunderstood. So maybe you can share with our listeners a little bit about why you call yourself the law of attraction hypnotist and a little bit about the process, because I think when people understand it, they can see that it's just a tool to help you remove some barriers and get into that subconscious, you know, mind and really perform at a higher level or achieve what you want, which really is, you know, what we're all here to accomplish. But let me let you answer the question. So why, why call yourself the law of attraction hypnotist? That's such a great question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before. So I really appreciate uh, the question because it's sort of like the elephant in the room. (laughs) And especially given the fact that these are two very misunderstood topics Mm -hmm. that I just decided, okay, I'm going to mesh these together. So, you know, it's kind of which came first, the chicken or the egg when it comes to my understanding of both of these tools. I really started learning about the law of attraction even before I became a hypnotherapist, which was, I did that back in 1999. So I always had this understanding that I have now that, you know, your thoughts ultimately create your reality. So when I became a hypnotherapist and I started making my recordings, I just started naturally in my script writing, talking from a law of attraction standpoint. So all of my material, everything that is in my recordings and in my conversations with my clients, it's always coming from, you know, you create your reality, the vibration, the energy, change your beliefs, you know, change your life. Everything that I talk about in my scripts, it's all like very law of attraction language, you know, oriented. So I just kind of thought, well, since that's sort of unique, like a kind of a unique thing to me, now, I didn't realize that it was until late. like, I always kind of figured all hypnotists talk like that, you know, all hypnotists incorporate that kind of wording and no, huh? they're, yeah. And it's just, it's not that true there. You even have hypnotists out there that don't even believe there is such a thing as a lot of attraction. And mm-hmm. I don't think they understood it the way that I believe in it, the way that I explain it, because so many people think of law of attraction as like this hocus pocus, you know, magic fairy dust. Yeah. If Um, I just think it and go sit on my couch, it's going to show up somewhere. And that's not really how it works. Exactly. But that's not how I like to explain law of attraction. I don't think it's of it like as a magical thing. Although sometimes things can seem magical just because of the fact that we have so much below the surface and our subconscious minds are so powerful that it can kind of cause these seeming coincidences and synchronicities. But really it was just you changing your perspective that makes things seem like miracles and, and magical. 
and also you understanding how much power you actually really have by tapping into the most powerful part of you. But anyway, I digress. The law of attraction language is 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 just so embedded into my hypnosis. I just decided let's just marry these two words together and call myself the law of attraction hypnotist. So people know like when they come to Victoria, they're going to get some law of attraction into their hypnosis. Yeah. And I think even for people who might not have a clear definition of what it is, I think there's enough information about the law of attraction or just even listening to the term to create excitement, to create, which is step one, because we're already shifting how we're feeling, right? Because we're opening our thoughts up. And like you said about changing our, pers our perspective, when you change the, the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so it starts that opportunity. And so if we could define the law of attraction in a simple to understand sentence or two, how would you define it? I would say that your predominant thoughts, feelings, and actions create your experiences and your results. Yes. And again, it can be positive empowering or the opposite. I believe that's another thing that some people miss about really connecting with and understanding the power of the law of attraction, because it's easy to want to connect with the positive side of it, but it's about also understanding and recognizing the patterns you already have that might be bringing some of the limitations or negativity into your world mm -hmm. and that you can shift that the other way too. Exactly. And, you know, I failed to answer your question about the definition of hypnosis and what that's all about. Before I go there, I, there was just one other little thing about the law of attraction that I want to just make really clear is that, you know, it's a practice. It's really kind of a way of living. It's a lifestyle. So just another way that I like to explain it is it's an empowering way of um, being. It's essentially taking responsibility for our outer experiences and realizing that we're not victims to the things that um, are happening. We're drawing things to us based on patterns of thinking and patterns of emotion and patterns of acting. And so if you're continuing to get the same results over and over again that are, well, if they're positive, then that means you, you've been creating, you have great patterns in your thinking that are creating those results. And conversely, if there are certain patterns of things like you just keep creating the same scenario with your relationships or you keep hitting against a roadblock in your business where you're just like, I can't get past the six figures or the seven figures even, or whatever it is, five figures, or you keep attracting the same kind of clients, even though those are not the ones you really want to work with or right. whatever it is. If you look at patterns in your life, you can always look within to figure out, well, what am I, what am I doing? What am I thinking? What is my predominant thought process like? And you will be surprised. I mean, even I, somebody who's been teaching and practicing this stuff for the last 25 years, I mean, I have bad days and bad yeah. situations where like, I find myself like complaining, you know, about the same thing over and over again. And it's like, oh, and every time I complain about that, guess what? I'm putting more attention. I'm skewing my perception about the way that this is happening. And when you skew your perception, you're not coming from a place of abundance or gratitude. Guess what? You're just now you like, oh, life is horrible. You're touching on so many things that we talk about a lot here on Mojo. Over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about how our thoughts become our reality. I've talked about gratitude, the power of that. And we were chatting a little bit before we got started here about you know, who the audience is. And I think a lot of people who are listening to the show are entrepreneurs or in a sales driven business or producers on some level. And it's important for all of us to understand that 
if we want to drive at a high level, the number one tool that we have is our own mind and that we have the ability to control it. We have the ability to shift our thinking, change our state, look at how our emotions are impacting us. And so I think that, you know, this conversation is really important and the work that you do is so fascinating because listen, I know a lot of people who want to achieve more in their business might think about hiring a business coach or a life coach, but what if you could get more specific about something that would help you fine tune what it is that you need. And I feel that that's probably a lot of what you help your clients do mm -hmm. is really fine tune more of their thinking and connecting with the subconscious mind and the power that we all have. And, you know, who are some of the people that are drawn to you that are either listening to your podcast or working with you? What, who are you attracting? Yeah, that's a great question. So I really made a decision, a conscious decision on who I wanted to attract several years, about a half a de decade ago. And, you know, it was really interesting because I was just working with all kinds of people, people mm -hmm. who wanted to lose weight, quit smoking, improve sports, improve test taking abilities. You know, it's like I was working with them all. And I just kind of, I said, who is my dream client? And my dream client are entrepreneurs, people who are like exactly like me, people mm -hmm. who are, you know, looking to make a breakthrough in their level of success, people who are big goal achievers and dreamers and want a lot for themselves, but they find themselves stuck at some kind of point where it's like, ugh. And so I help people to bring awareness to what is going on. And that's, you know, with the power of hypnotherapy, that's where that comes in. It's like, we can kind of dig around inside and we can say, you know, hey, what is keeping me at this level? And what am I afraid of? Or what is it that I believe? And what am I hanging on to? Maybe it could even be some kind of resentments that somebody has and they just need to forgive and shift that energy or maybe it's just that they just need to shift their mindset to like they just keep looking at what they don't have and they get frustrated by what they don't have and that causes a lot of doubt and that causes a lot of fear and you know the more you focus on the same thing the more you stay in that same place yes. so i just kind of help people to shift their awareness around so it is entrepreneurial people who just want more abundance and whether it's an abundance of time, because time is like so much why we became entrepreneurs in the first place is we, were we want some freedom, right? We yeah, want to control our own time. <laughs> you know, this story that like, oh, you're going to, you know, don't have to work 40 hours a week. You can be your own boss. But, you know, then you get into the business and it, you know, kind of turns out it, it ends up taking more time and <laughs> you don't have as much control over your life as you thought that you would, you know, and you can easily just kind of become a slave to it. So I help people who get into that position where they just, they get into this rut where there's all these have tos. Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. And it's like, no, you you don't have to do anything. I help people just wipe the slate clean and create a blank slate. Like how would you design your ideal day in your business? What would that, you know, really wow, look that's like? That's so powerful. And do you find that most people have a little resistance to that? They do because yeah. they think that like, I'm the only one I that couldn't can possibly have that kind of ability or control. I can't just wipe the slate clean. Exactly. And really the message is you don't have to do anything. This is your life and no one else is to lead. Now you have to make decisions that, you know, you have to live with the decisions you make and you have to perhaps have a strategy then. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's your choice. Exactly. And, you know, it could just be little micro things right. that, you know, because a lot of times, you know, the reason why a person has a hard time breaking through to the next level is because they just, their day gets packed and they don't have the time to really focus on the growth. And because mm -hmm. they find themselves just in the like, okay, well, I can only see this many people in a day, or I can only do this much in a day. And they find themselves- The activities are just maintaining that level. 
Exactly. And so they're just maintaining it. And then of course you get into the idea of I'm the best. I can, I can't possibly outsource this. No one else can do this for me. And trust me, we've all been there. I get into that place too. And one of the things that I've just had people do, and I've even had myself do is make a list of all the things that you'd like, just follow yourself around for a day or a week and just make a list of everything that you're doing. And, and really like figure out like, well, what is the zone of genius that you really like the business can't really run without that one special unique right. thing that you do. And like, for me, that's make the recordings. That's me making the content that I make that goes into my app. But, you know, do I really need to be the one that, uh, creates the email and sends out the email? Do I really need to be the one that, uh, uploads it up to my podcast? Do I really need to be the one that does all the little supporting roles? And no. So once I kind of realized, it's like, well, what's the low hanging fruit? Like, what's the thing that's the easiest to just offload? And you just like offload one thing, one task off yeah, of that task average. list. Ooh. That's going to free you up and that's going to free you up to think even more strategically to where eventually is like, you've got, you know, eight different people doing different things for you. I didn't know that this is what I was going to talk about. So somebody out there needs to hear this, I guess. Yeah. I believe that's <laughs> always true, right? That is so true. We're always excited <laughs> to what needs to be said. So I, I believe that's true. Let me bring you back to something that I wanted to ask you, mostly for someone I think who also needs to hear this. Is there a right way or a wrong way to use the law of attraction? And is it the same thing when we say manifest? Because I want to make mm. sure that people connect with that too. Yeah. So I think of these as two different things. I think of manifestation is the process that you go through to get into alignment so that you are attracting according to the law of attraction. You're attracting more of the things that you do want versus the things that you don't want. So let me answer that question with, is there a wrong way or a right way with, we're always using it. So it's like air. It's always at play. It's always at play. It's always happening. It's never not happening. I would say that the wrong way, <laughs> if there, you know, if there was really a wrong way is to continue thinking the same old things and continue to complain about the results that you're getting would be the wrong way because you haven't actually identified what thoughts am I holding onto that are creating that reality. And that would be the correct way to use it is to ultimately just kind of not in a beat yourself up way in a, an empowering positive way to call attention, like do these little pattern interrupts where you find yourself, like you just catch yourself. Oh my God, I'm thinking, you know, like, listen to what I'm saying right now. Yes. Listen to what I'm saying. That's causing this situation to repeat itself over and over again. Because uh -huh. awareness is the gift, right? It, it all starts with awareness. And so if you can be aware of what you're thinking, then you have the opportunity to do something about it or not. It's always about choice, right? Exactly. So, so that's the, again, like you said, the law of attraction is always at play. If you tap into it and learn how to use it more to your advantage, then you see things change because if nothing changes, nothing changes. Exactly. And- yeah. So that's where the two of these really come together is you use your conscious, logical mind to catch yourself and realize, okay, according to the law of attraction, if I am thinking that I can't find good help, that's like my deal that mm -hmm. I get into that. A lot like of entrepreneurs, I mean, have that thought, like I can't find the right person or my business is not going to grow because I can't hire the right person, right? Yeah. And I can't so, afford the right person. Not all afforded. <laughs> right. And so when you hear yourself and you get frustrated and part of it is just because you're carrying a vibe that ultimately, and it's like a radar and believe it or not, it's like this vibe 
is the one that is hi doing the hiring. <laughs> okay, so let's get real about that. Victoria, this is also what we can help people understand about relationships, right? Finding a partner in life, if that's your goal, or even, you know, looking at your friendship circle. That vibe is what's bringing in or keeping out what you might even want. So this is such a powerful thing for, I think, people to understand that you have so much more control about how you're using your energy and those things that you're frustrated about, those things that you're really complaining about. Yeah. It's a product of your own resistance. It is. And like just in the last couple of days, like people are so unaware of their general common attitude and conversations that they have about these ideas that they hold about people and about the world. Just this morning, I was on Facebook and a friend of mine was talking about, oh, this just made me realize how glad I am that I'm not married because, and just going on and on about these stereotypes about how men leave things all over the, the house and how they're not clean and blah, 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 blah. And it was obviously as a joke. And there is obviously part of you that believes that that joke as well. And so I chimed in and I said, I must be really lucky because my husband is super clean. But I set it up that way. Like that's just a belief that I carry. And this is a belief that that person carries. And so when we have that belief, that kind of keeps us from attracting the right people into our lives. We're going to either attract somebody like that, or we're just going to avoid getting into a relationship altogether because, oh, if it's like that, who even wants that? Well, I think because a deep rooted need that we all have is to be right. <laughs> and so really, even on an unconscious level, we want to prove ourselves right. And until we change the belief system, we're going to keep bringing the evidence in to support what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. And so it all changes with our beliefs and what, what we're holding on to. And again, that is why I wanted to have you on the show, because I think there's so much power in this conversation for people to want to really look at and explore. And if someone is hearing this for the first time, what kind of advice would you give to someone to maybe start to tap into or use the law of attraction, or, or maybe it starts even with recognizing their energy? I'm not sure. What yeah. are a couple of things you could share for someone who's really open to this? This is new to them and they want to try to move in that direction. Here's what I would suggest. So I find actually a lot of power in just writing in just mm. journaling. And so as part of maybe your morning routine or your evening routine, but you wanna take an area of your life that you feel like could be improved. And I like to state that in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And so look at an area of your life that you wanna improve and just kind of begin to ask yourself, like what are the um, things that maybe I'm contributing to the situation. Because here's the thing, you can't change the reflection in the mirror. <laughs> and so many people, they spend all their time trying to get the reflection to change. And no matter how many times you touch the mirror, it all starts within, it all starts within. So what am I contributing to this situation that's creating it and allowing yourself to just believe that I'm 100% responsible and letting that be the good news because you have the power to change it. Exactly. And you run it in, you can pull it out. <laughs> exactly. So once you pull that out and you know what it is, okay, so maybe it's that I need more discipline. Maybe I need more motivation. Maybe I need to work on my confidence and maybe I need to work on healing some of the old beliefs that I've been carrying around that I'm not good enough or that I don't deserve success or that money is the root of all evils or I'm ugly or fat or once you get to this age these are the things that are going to happen I listened to a woman say that like as soon as you get old this is what happens and it's like 
that's mm-hmm. your belief. That's not mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can do that little self-reflection and then you figure out like, okay, well, what are the areas that I need to improve? That's where hypnosis can come in to like save the day <laughs> and to change your mindset and to change your deep seated belief system around that. And so you can now program in new empowering beliefs that allow you to be the confident, disciplined, motivated, persistent person who is confident speaking and all the things that you would need to do in order to be the person that is in alignment with the goals that you want to achieve. And I've created over a thousand programs that help people, my recordings that help people very specifically in these areas of their life. Is it a guided meditation or hypnosis to help them work through it on their own? You guide them through it that way? Yeah. So I have my Believe app and I mean, don't you just love that name? It's it's all yeah. about really just getting yourself to believe in your dreams and, and your ability to achieve that. And so in my Believe app, there's tons of, they're all guided meditations designed to help you to manifest success using law of attraction strategies. I have a recording on pretty much anything you can even imagine from anxiety to sleep to confidence, but it's definitely geared more toward business entrepreneurial people who need that support to get their mind disciplined and in the game. And I say disciplined because so much of this is about disciplining the thoughts to think the thoughts that you need to be thinking in order to make you that is a great point because i think people can understand right we all know when we let our thoughts just run wild and we create all kinds of stories we create all kinds of scenarios we wind up then letting those thoughts create feelings and we could be so far off from what's really happening yet it feels because we create our reality, it feels so true and real. And I think that for a lot of people, probably especially all of us who are entrepreneurs, discipline yeah. is a tough one, you mm-hmm. know, because we have that free spirited nature. Yet it's really about just reining it in and, and allowing ourselves to understand and believe that we have this control and we can really be in the driver's seat of our own thinking, of our mm-hmm. own mind. And I know through what you do with hypnosis, that's a process to help people see that, that you can do that. Absolutely. Um, And it is a discipline in and of itself in so many ways, because you have an opportunity, I mean, for 25 minutes or however long the sessions are. I mean, I have some that are only five minutes because sometimes you only have five minutes in a day. Yeah. Most of them are in the like 25 minute range, but you know, it's a discipline just to keep your mind focused on what you're choosing to think right now. Right. And that's going to, you know, be the thing that's going to win the day at the end of the day. If you just continue to persist diligently and dedicatedly and persistently and with motivation and confidence and just keep the dream alive in your mind, you will get there eventually, you know, it's the compound effect. Yeah, it it will eventually happen. And call that the law of attraction, call that disciplining your thoughts, you know, call it whatever you want. But it's like your thoughts are going to create your reality. If you persist with them long enough, it's astonishing to me that people give up on their dreams. Like it took me almost two and a half years to get this app to come to fruition it should have only taken six months. And uh-huh. so it was maddening, you know, maddening process that it took longer than that. But, you know, there's no way I could like just stop. See it through. You have to see it through. <laughs> yeah. But that, but that's why the work you do is so important because there are a lot of people who struggle with that and struggle yeah. with having maybe it's discipline, the grit, the persistence or the belief that they deserve it all, right? So there's a lot of things at play. And there's one other thing you said that I just want to touch on too. You basically said in in, in an indirect way that it doesn't have to take a lot of time because really the five or 10 minutes a day 
-hmm. that you spend could absolutely create this chain reaction. So I think that, you know, for all the busy people out there, we're not talking about a discipline that needs to take an hour or a lot of time. It's literally uh, something you can connect with in five or 10 minutes because mm -hmm. it's already at play, as we keep saying. It's already there. You just have to tap into it and use it to your advantage. So, so Victoria, I know this has been great and we're probably running out of time. What is one thing you really, if you could sum it all up into one message, what would you really like someone to be taking away from this conversation? So I would say that it all starts with that your dreams are absolutely possible and that the thoughts, the imagination, the things that you dream about, they were put there by design. You know, they yeah, were. I believe that too. Yeah. You're not going to necessarily see the overnight results. You're going to get there at the moment that you come fully into alignment with the person that you were meant to become. And I think that that thing that you want is the dangling carrot that is out there saying grow. Yes, it's the prize for the journey of becoming who you were meant to be. Mm -hmm. it, right. You, you said it better than I could have said it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we're just good together. Yeah, because I love that you just opened that up because that is another thing that I know a lot of people struggle with, whether it's to start a business, write a book, whatever it is. That's just the prize. It's the payoff for you to understand how to get on the journey of self-development, of personal development, self-awareness, personal development, to become who you were meant to be, the full expression of yourself. And exactly. then that thing that you say you want is just the reward. Yeah. And I mean, it's worse like, to have. Yeah. It's it's like a marathon in a way. The, the the actual day that you run the marathon is five hours of your life. and But the moment that you cross a finish line, it's like a split second. But that's been the goal. But in order to cross that finish line, there was all the conditioning that needed uh, to happen. You weren't able to just run that race that day. You had to start out at a point where maybe you could only run a mile and then you can run three miles and then five miles and then 10 and you know so on before you can run 26 miles. And I think it's very much the same. You know, it's like, boy, it almost seems impossible that I could create a business that could help a million people or whatever it is. But you start where you are and you just continue to build yourself and grow yourself into the person who is capable of having such a business. And if somebody else can do it, why not you? Beautiful. It's a great place to end this right there. You're right. Absolutely. So Victoria, thank you for joining me today. And if people would like to connect with you or learn more about you, how can they find you? I would love to either have them come to my website, victoriamgallagher.com, not Victoria Gallagher, but victoriamgallagher.com, or they can also find me on my Believe Hypnosis app. And it's a free download and it's going to really help you in your entrepreneurial uh, journey. Great. Well, Victoria, thank you again for joining me. This was such a good conversation. I know that we helped a lot of people find something to connect with on this, in this conversation, this episode. And I look forward to probably speaking with you again in the future. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. You asked great questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, listen, thanks for joining me. I know you had a lot of things you could do right now and you made a choice to hang out with Victoria and I, and I believe that you are better for it. So thank you and have a powerful day. We'll see you soon.